21st Precinct, Sergeant Collins. What do you mean, robbed? Held up? Where is this? The what bar and grill? Oh. What's the address? Yeah. Did they have guns? How many? You're in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow by transcription the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, just wait for the officers. They'll be right there. Yes, right away. They'll be right there. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. It was 2.20 p.m. I had just returned from patrol of the precinct, and I was in my office speaking to a photographer who had his studio near the station house in regard to arrangements for making new individual pictures of the members of my command, which are required for departmental files every five years. And here are some samples of my work, Captain. Oh, excuse me a second, Mr. Bell. Oh, sure. Go right ahead. 21st Precinct, Captain Kennelly. Sergeant Collins on TS, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. Paychecks are here, Captain. All right. Tell Lieutenant Pope to assign a man to make distribution. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bell. Well, that's perfectly all right, Captain. The uh, samples. Oh, no. Uh, this is the size we require, isn't it? Yes, yes. That's the exact size. Mm-hmm. Well, looks like you do very nice work, Mr. Bell. We try, Captain. Well, uh, what do you think you'd have to charge each man? Let's see, uh, you told me you had about 175 men to be photographed? Yeah, that's right. Plus about 15 members of the 21st Squad, uh, the detectives. I imagine most of them might want to take advantage of the convenience. To be perfectly honest with you, Captain, I'd be willing to give a very good rate to make the pictures Mm -hmm. and hope to make my profit in case any of the men want to buy prints for their own personal use, uh, the enlargements. Oh, well, that's understandable, but uh, I don't want you pressuring anyone around here to buy prints. Oh, no, no, I won't. Uh, What do you think you charge each man? Well, let's say, uh, two dollars. Uh-huh. And included in that, I would furnish them with one glossy, the same size as the official picture. All right. That sounds fair enough, Mr. Bell. Good. We'll get your room to work in on the third floor. Oh, fine. Come in. Excuse me, Captain. Come in, Sergeant. Signal 30 just came over the air. Uh-huh. Third Avenue near 68. An armed robbery at a bar and grill. Bartender and customers are holding a suspect. All right, I'll go. Uh, Captain? Oh, uh, Mr. Bell, Sergeant Collins will take you to see Patrolman Archer. He's the 124 man. Uh, Sergeant, tell Archer to get Mr. Bell set up and going with the photograph. Yes, sir. I'll get a car in for you, Captain. All right, you do that. Oh, uh, Cassidy. Yes, Captain. Are you going over to that armed robbery? Uh, Yes, sir. Goldman and I. Do you want to ride? Yeah, okay. Never mind the car, Sergeant. I'll go over with the detective. We're parked right on by. You certainly move fast around here, don't you? When things happen fast, you move fast. Well, I guess that's life. Yep, life and then some. We were at the scene of the holdup within five minutes. Patrolman Owen Kenny and Ernest Pagano in sector car number three, the first to arrive in response to the radio signal, had taken custody of the suspect being held by the bartender and two customers. She was a young woman, hardly 20 years old. The victim and witnesses had told Sergeant Waters and other officers that the young woman, in the company of two men, also in their 20s, came into the place shortly after 1 o'clock and ordered drinks. When the lunch hour rush had dwindled to two patrons, the men got up from their booth, walked to the bar, flashed a gun, and held up the place. They took $230 from the cash register and fled, leaving the young woman, who said her name was Edith Hargrave, seated in the booth. Detectives Cassidy and Goldman began the investigation, and Edith Hargrave was taken from the scene of the holdup to the 21st squad, where Detective Cassidy was in the process of making her fingerprints. All right, honey, it's not that bad. All right, just hold the handle lamp and let me do the work. Don't step up like that. I'll try. That's it. Limp. Now give me the whole hand. Limp, that's it. Relax. Okay, that's all. Wash up over here. Where? Over here, Edie. Yes. There's soap and there's towels. Yes, sir. 
Uh, what about the lieutenant? Is he still tied up? Yes, he is. There's plenty of that soap, Betty. That stuff comes off hard. Yes, sir. But very hard. Want to change your mind about anything, Edie? What do you mean, change my mind? There's towels. I mean, about how you told us you were never arrested before. I never was. Use the towels. Your hands will get chapped. Never was. Honest. All right, we'll see. Honest. Well, like for everything, there's always got to be a first time in there. In the trash basket. Okay, Edie. Come on. Yes, sir. Oh, I, I can take my purse, can I? Sure, bring it along. You're sure now before we get any farther? All right, sit down here. Yes, I'm sure. Here, Edie, sign this card here. What is it? What am I signing? It just says that you verify that these are your fingerprints. Oh. Where am I going now? To jail? No, not just yet. I want to go home. Cassidy. So do I. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. All right, Edie. In the office. Over there, to the desk. Yes, sir. Edie, this is Lieutenant King. He's the commander of the 21st Squad. Sit down, Edie. Yes, sir. Well, I understand you picked yourself some fine company. How was I to know? Smart girl finds out before she goes bar hopping with two guys like that. I didn't have a date with the two of them. I only had a date with one, Dick. That's the only one I knew. I didn't know the other. Honest. Did he ever tell you where he lived, Dick? No, he never did. Didn't you ask him? No. Why not? Well, if I asked him, I thought he might think I was curious about going there. Didn't care to have one thing lead to another. You met him when? Three or four nights ago. I told the detective. He came into the place and... Place uh... where you work? Yeah. Yeah, place I work. Mm-hmm. Sat down at the counter and he ordered a cup of coffee and I, I served it to him. Things were slow. And before you know it, we got to talking. Guess you got to talking too much, huh? Well, he looked like a nice enough boy. The other one didn't look like a nice boy, did he? I didn't even know about him. Dick and I had this date for this afternoon before I went to work. He came by for me, and the other boy was in the car. He said, we're all going out for a good time. I said, has he got a date? And he said, he'll get a date. Meanwhile, we'll all go out and have a couple of drinks. So we went to these places, and you know. Are you in the habit of drinking in the daytime? Well, I worked night. You were out with him Sunday night? I, I told the detectives I was off Sunday night, didn't I? Yes, you told us. Where'd you go Sunday night? Went to a few places. Where, for instance? Gee, I don't know. A couple of bars, three or four. Well, where first? Down Times Square. Where in Times Square? Well, on Broadway, I think. Maybe 7th Avenue. I don't know. It, it was one of those places where the bars are circle-like and people sit around watching musicians play on a stand-up behind the bar. Did he talk to anybody in there? Just me. And the bartender to order drinks. Oh. Where else did you go? After that? Yes. To another bar near there. We had a couple of drinks there, too. I think I had a sandwich also. The only place he talked to somebody was much later. A man. Somebody he knew? Oh, yes. Where was this? Another bar. In Times Square, too? No. No, as a matter of fact, it was... Up around here someplace, because I remember we came uptown through Central Park in his car, and we came out of the park at 65th Street, you know? I remember that. It wasn't far from there, on Lexington or 3rd Avenue, something like that. I had a few drinks. Well, who was it he talked to? friend of his. Nellie. I remember Nellie. thought you said it was a man he talked to. Nellie was a man. That's how I remember. I thought, a funny man named Nellie. Isn't that funny? A man named Nellie? What? I don't know. I didn't hear. You're going to have to help us more than this, Edie. Those two boys are wanted for robbery. I didn't have anything to do with it. I don't know anything about it. Well, you know something about it now. I hope it's not long before we all know a lot more about it. I returned to the station house at 4 p.m. in time to turn out the platoon for the night tour. Lieutenant King was waiting in the muster room for me. He said that he had already talked to the desk officers at the 19th and 23rd precincts. He would like a description of the man, Nellie, announced at each of the turnouts in the precincts on the Upper East Side in the hope that some patrolman on post was acquainted with Nellie or had heard of him. I invited him to make the announcement himself. With Lieutenant King, I stood behind the desk. It was exactly four o'clock. 
The 53 men who would patrol every inch of the precinct between that moment and midnight were lined up in the back room awaiting the signal of the desk officer. On the sound of the bell, they marched out into the muster room in a military manner and formed ranks facing the desk. Sandra. The roll was called for entry Scully. in the blotter. Present. Yeah. Turner. Yeah. Underwood. Yeah. Weber. Yeah. Weeks. Present. Wolf. Present. Ziegler. Here. Yeah. All right, men. <coughs> a couple of things. <coughs> We've had three or four complaints about peddlers annoying people on the streets to purchase toys and flowers. You see any of these peddlers on your post, I want you to stop them and examine their license. If they have no license, give them a summons. Or if they're causing too much of a nuisance, bring them into the station house. I want these complaints to stop. Also, beginning tomorrow and for the next two days, the photographer will be on the third floor to make official photographs for the department files before and after the 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock turnouts. Details are on the bulletin boards. Now, Lieutenant King has something to say to you. Pay close attention. <coughs> Lieutenant. We had an armed robbery in the precinct this afternoon. In the course of the investigation, we've developed the information that one of the suspects is acquainted with a man who hangs around a bar someplace on the east side. Perhaps in this precinct, perhaps in the 19th or 23rd. We'd like to locate the acquaintance in the hope he could lead us to the suspects. The acquaintance is described as about 35 years old, 5 feet 8 inches and 150 pounds. He has brown hair, rather thin on top. We know he goes under the name of Nelly. On your posts, have any of you men run into a man of that description known by the name of Nellie? Lieutenant? Yes, Weber? Are you acquainted with a man named Nellie answering that description? Yes, sir. All right, you stay here. You're temporarily relieved from your post. Yes, sir. Sergeant, post the platoon. Platoon, can shut. Right, face. Forward, hurt. Weber? Yes, sir, Captain. Come on to my office. Matt? Coming, Captain. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Well, which is your post, Weber? Number 11, Lieutenant. You know a Nelly, hmm? Yes, sir. He's one of the guys that hang out around there. Has he ever given you any trouble? No, he stays pretty clear of me, Captain. Well, what does he do? He says he's a mechanic. He might be working at it, I don't know. He hangs around two or three bars there every night. Uh-huh. Had some information that he was hustling policy slips once a couple of months ago. Reported it, and the plainclothesman checked him out. Nothing to it, I heard. I do know he's done time. Oh? For what? Receiving stolen goods, Lieutenant. Recently? A couple of years ago, he got out. Wouldn't be surprised if he still gets into a deal once in a while. Uh, that's not his real name, is it, Nellie? No, sir, it's a nickname. His name's Bevan. Nelson Bevan. Uh-huh. Captain, could we borrow Weber to work with us tonight? Oh, sure, Matt, if you need him. I'd like to send him up there with either Cassidy or Goldman to look around for Nellie. Know where he lives, Weber? No, sir, just where he hangs out. All right, that's good enough. We'll find him. Okay, Weber. Change into your civilian clothes. You got your work cut out for you. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Men, we're offering you an opportunity to study the various operations and applications of the Mannheim slide rule. Well, perhaps this offer wouldn't appeal to the average clerk, journalist, or administrative specialist. But to the man engaged in technical or scientific work, it would mean something. If he were not already familiar with the Mannheim slide rule, he would be interested. He'd want to know how he could take advantage of the offer. He'd know that a working knowledge of the slide rule would be of considerable help to him in his job. He'd learn that the person to see is his education officer who would tell him that the course and the application of the Mannheim-type slide rule is offered by USAFI. He'd fill out an application to enroll in the course and take the first step toward power through knowledge with USAFI. Yes, he'd do that, if he were smart. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Frank Kennelly. As instructed, Patrolman Weber changed to his civilian clothes to assist detectives in their search for Nelson Bevan, also known as Nelly. While Detective Goldman sought information on Nellie through other means, Patrolman Weber took Detective Cassidy to the bars where he thought Nellie was a regular patron. The proprietor of one place told the officers that Nellie was indeed a steady customer and that he came into the place late almost every afternoon between 5 and 5.30. The two officers took a booth in the back of the place and waited. 
<laughs> sure beats walking the post. Yeah, I guess it does. Hey, Cassidy, how many years you got in the job? Twelve. And in the brains? Almost nine now. Yeah. How'd you make it? Well, I made a good collar. I almost had my head blown off. No kidding. I was walking a post. It was late to a dark and cold. The only thing open on the block was this drugstore in the corner. I rang in for a personal. Well, I figured I'd go in there and warm up a little bit and maybe sneak a smoke. <laughs> so I started into the drugstore. There were these two guys in there, and the doc had his hands high in the air. Wow. So I get out my gun. I don't ask any questions. They start shooting at me, and as soon as I come in the door... But I dropped one of them with my first shot and hit the other one with about the fourth or fifth. One of them was dead by the time the ambulance got there. The other's still in Sing Sing. Just got a letter from him last week. That was some collar. Yeah. Well, Commissioner Valentine showed up at the station house at 4.30 in the morning. Patted me on the back and made me a detective on the spot. Mayor LaGuardia had me down to City Hall the next day. For tea. Well, I'm trying to make it the other way. I'm going to Delahanty's now, studying for the sergeant's examination, and I... That's Nellie. Yeah? He just stepped up to the bar. Brown overcoat. Uh Uh-huh. All right. Let's go talk to him. Okay. Keep it social for now. Let me spring it on. Okay? Okay, sure. Hello, Nellie? Oh, how are you? Patrolman Weber. Sure, I know you. Patrolman Weber, sure. You're not working tonight, huh? Yeah, I'm working. No blue suit? Not tonight. Nellie, this is Detective Cassidy. Glad to know you. Yeah. Where have you been keeping yourself, Nellie? I haven't seen you around. Oh, busy. You know me, Mr. Weber. Busy. I understand you're in the general merchandise business, Nellie. <laughs> oh, you got me wrong, Mr. Uh... Cassidy. We've always got you guys wrong, huh? I'm out of that business, Mr. Cassidy. I've been out a long time. That right, Mr. Weber? You know me. Yeah, I know you, Nellie. Hey, how about a drink? How about a drink on me? No, thanks. Well, if you don't mind. Skull. Skull. Nellie. Yeah, Miss Cassidy? Where's Dick? Dick who? The guy you spoke to in here Sunday night. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know any Dick. Come on. Let's take a ride to the station house. We'll talk about it there. Oh, Dick. Yeah, yeah. Dick. Where is he? I don't know where he is, fellas. Him and Neil are just strangers, practically. I was introduced to him just once, and I seen him here that night. What night was it? Sunday. Yeah, I seen him in here Sunday, and we had a few words. About what? Time of day. We just passed the time of day. Is that all? Yeah, you know. Hello. How are you? What's new? That's all. Come on, Nelly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where is he? I don't know where he is. That's the honest to goodness truth. I don't know a thing about him. I don't even know his last name. What do you want from me? What did he want from you? You know the kind of reputation I got. He had a ring and a watch he wanted to realize something out of. I told him I wasn't in that kind of business anymore, and that was that. How did you meet him? Some guy pointed him out to me. What guy? What guy? I don't know what guy. No million guys. Just one of those things. I was standing on Second Avenue one afternoon last week, and he walked up to me. He asked me to come over and sit in the car, so I did. He had these things he showed me, and I told him I didn't want any part of them. What, is this guy hot, Dick, uh, this Mr. Weber? Burning. Good thing I didn't have anything to do with him. What kind of car? Uh, it's a Hudson, I think. A tan Hudson. It's 49 or a 50, something like that. Well, that checks, Cassidy. Everything I tell you checks. You know me, Mr. Weber. Yeah. You know me from way back. Too far back. Where is he? I don't know. That's the honest to goodness truth. Where does he hang around? How should I know where he hangs around? All I know about him is what I told you. I've seen him only that twice. Once when he had the merchandise and once that Sunday night. I don't know him from Adam otherwise. I know nothing about him. You give me a stack of Bibles, I'll swear. I still wouldn't believe you, Nelly. You wouldn't? Come on, let's go in. Is that trip necessary? Yeah. Can I at least finish my drink? Go ahead. Well, skull again. Skull, Nelly. It was 5.45 p.m. when I signed the last report in my folder and put it in the letterbox with the other reports and communications to be picked up and taken by the precinct messenger to the 6th Division office at 160 East 35th Street. I got up from behind my desk and walked out into the muster room. Yes, sir, Captain. Go ahead, take the call. Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Collins. Yeah, Coley. Listen, walk around and talk to the owner of that dress store at 613 before he closes. Remind him again to set his burglar alarm correctly. We don't want to make another run there during the night. Yeah, all right. Yes, sir, Captain. I'm going to sign out, Sergeant. Yes, sir. 
Well, what time are you going out on patrol tonight? Sergeant Rosen is going to relieve me on TS at 8 o'clock, sir. All right. Take a turn by that ballroom on York Avenue sometime during the night. Make sure they've corrected the conditions we talked to the manager about, all right? Yes, sir. And uh, leave a report for yes, me. Sir. All right, Nellie. Step right up there. We're here. That's all right. Hello, Weber. Captain. Sergeant, would you bring uh, up uh, to Lieutenant King for me? Oh, you found him, huh? Yes, sir. What kind of job is finding me? Who was hiding? Lieutenant King. I think I was the hottest guy in New York. Yes, Cassidy's here. He wants to talk to you. Okay, Cassidy. Take it over there. Huh? Good job, Weber. Thank you, Captain. We got Nellie, Lieutenant. Yeah, downstairs. He hasn't been much help for Cassidy, though. Who said I haven't? I can't tell him what I don't know. What do you want me to do? Kid him? Uh, yes, sir. He's here. I don't kid anybody. Yes, sir. I'll ask him. Thanks, Sergeant. Okay. Captain, Lieutenant King wants to know if you've got him in it. Well, what's the trouble? He didn't say all right, I'll come up. Okay, Nellie, let's go. Till it a post. I'm going to the detective, Sergeant. Yes, sir. So I get shoved around. Till it a post. We'll try to make it post a pillar, Nellie, just so things don't get dull. We walked out of the muster room and into the back room where two motorcycle patrolmen from motorcycle precinct number one were sitting at the table going over summons stubs preparatory to informing the desk officer of the summonses they had issued motorists in the 21st precinct. Then we climbed the rickety stairs to the second floor and walked into the 21st squad office. All right, Nellie. Sit down right there on the bench. Listen, Mr. Cassidy, you got any idea how long I'm going to be here? Why? Well, I, I got a business appointment. What kind of business? On a bench, huh? Yeah. Sit All down. Right. That's what you want. Captain, am I supposed to stay around here or do you want me back on my post? Well, you see what Lieutenant King has to say, Weber. Yes, sir. Whatever he wants. Hello, Captain. Thanks for coming up. That's oh, all right, man. Weber, good job. Thanks, Lieutenant. Keep him there a minute, Cassidy. Yes, sir. Captain, it's that Edith Hargrave. Oh? We checked out her prints. She's never been in trouble. I'm sure she's telling a straight story about this fellow, Dick. Mm-hmm. Her boss called me. He says he knows you. A fellow named Audley runs a restaurant up on Lexington Avenue in the 80s. Oh, yes, I know. She waits tables there. Audley said he'd vouch for her. What kind of a guy is he? He's all right, man. Been in business there a long time. He's never had any trouble that I know of. Uh-huh. He's okay. Edie, you remember Captain Kennelly? When can I go? Can I go soon? I will see. You'd know this, Nellie, if you saw him, would you? I told you I would. All right. Walk over to the door there. Let me know if you see him sitting outside. Really? I want to go home. See him? Yes, on the bench. That's fellow. That's him. All right. Cassidy, bring him in here. Yes, sir. Sit down, Edie. Oh, excuse me, Captain. Well, it's all right. All right, Nellie. Inside. Tell her the post. Shut the door, Cassidy. Yes, sir. This is Lieutenant King and Captain Kennelly. Nellie Bubb. Gentlemen. You know this young lady, Nellie? She looks familiar, I'll say that. She was with Dick on Sunday night when he met you. Was she? You know I was. All right, Nellie, you can save yourself a lot of trouble. We want Dick and the guy he was with. We want them in a robbery this afternoon, and we think they're right for five or six more. Now, where is he? I said I know where he is. I don't know him that well. Look, mister, I don't want to waste any time with you. You told the officer he drives a 1949 or 50 Hudson painted tan. If you know that much, you know a lot more. How could I know a lot more? I've seen the car. You know where he stays. He told you where he stays, didn't he? No. Well, where do you think he stays? What, do you want me to speculate? Yes, yeah, speculate. We'll go from there. Well, once in a conversation, he said he parked his car at night near that museum over there. You know, on the west side, right off the park? Museum of Natural History? Yeah, that one. So? So if he parks his car there at night, he must stay around there someplace, don't you think? I don't know what to think, Nellie. We'll see what we can find out. The interrogation of Nelson Bevan, also known as Nellie, continued. Meanwhile, Lieutenant King had Patrolman Weber take the girl, Edith Hargrave, to a restaurant for a meal. After listening to the questioning for some minutes, I went downstairs, signed the blotter, and left the precinct to go off duty. At the end of an hour, Lieutenant King had gotten no more information from Nellie on the whereabouts of the suspects. He concluded that Nellie knew no more. It was decided to trace the suspects by attempting to locate the car parked on the street in the vicinity of the Museum of Natural History located on the west side of Central Park between 77th Street and 81st Street. Inasmuch as this location was out of the 21st, the commanders of both the 20th and 24th detective squads were called. Each furnished two detectives, and with four men from the 21st, the search of the streets began later that night. 
Because of his work on the case so far, Patrolman Weber continued temporarily as the partner of Detective Cassidy. Shortly before midnight, they were cruising on Columbus Avenue looking for a 1949 or 1950 Hudson painted tan. Suppose we go up to the corner and take a right and come back in the next block. Okay, Weber? Yeah, sure. We might be batting our brains out for nothing. Wouldn't be smart for them to hold on to that car any longer. I know we've got the girl. You give them credit for being smart, leaving her in the bar like that, taking her along on a robbery. Some of them get smart at strange times. Take a right, huh? Hey, Cassidy, look up there. Go on, straight through. 49 Hudson. Pull up ahead of it. Yeah. Let's have a look. I'm right with you. Of course, I grant you that not everybody owns a Hudson, but there's a few of them around. Yeah. Fill the hood. Warm. We'll let try the door. Uh-huh. Well, what's the matter? This could be the car. The girl said she remembered a little blue knob on the steering wheel, like that one. Whoever left it here must be coming back for it. Yeah? There's a bottle of whiskey under the seat. Half full, too. Well, what now? Suppose you ring in to Lieutenant King. Yeah. Tell him what we've got. I think it's a car. Ask him to check out the registration and see if there's an alarm out for the car. Yeah, there's a candy store on the corner. Good, use the phone in there. I'll keep my eyes on the car. Okay. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening, Pop. Yes, sir, something? Yeah, yeah, for the telephone, please. For the telephone. Stay open all night, what do I get? The telephone, customer. The telephone. On the wall. Yeah, thanks. What's that? I'm a cop. Get help. Hey, listen. Cassidy! Cassidy? Here. I'm the cop. Get that one's gun. How is it? Through the neck. I don't bother with that other one. I got his gun. You hit? Yeah. Not bad, I don't think. Here, let me see. On the shoulder, that's all. They came back as soon as you went inside. They started blazing away. You sure handled them, though. Yeah. Well, here I go again. Tea with the mayor. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Collins. What is it? A kid? Who's the driver, you? He was what? Riding a bicycle? And so it goes, Where around is... the clock, through the week, every Where? day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring, or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, transcribed, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Elaine Rost, George Petrie, Jack Orison, Santos Ortega, Mandel Kramer, and Michael Dreyfus. Written and directed by Stanley Niss, Art Hanna speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.